Welcome everybody to the um, December 13th, recording in progress. December 13th, 2021, Rochester Select Board meeting, and we have advertised it publicly in three places and <clears throat> on the website and emailed it to interested parties. So we um, satisfy that open meeting law requirement, and um, <clears throat> we have. Um, if anyone has any comments they want to make afterwards, we'll um, have five minute increments to do so. And um, <clears throat> we'll start out with the minutes from the November 22nd uh, select board meeting. And those look good to you guys? I have read them. Yeah, they look good to me. I they move to approve. I so, second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> and we also have uh, meetings from the uh, uh, emergency meeting minutes that we piggybacked on with the warned budget and finance committee meeting to um, um, award the uh, the mowing and sidewalk contract and that looked good to me also i'd move to approve those i second all in favor all right Aye. Aye. okay <clears throat> and um we have um as a guest is diane with us on zoom not yet. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll wait. She, for... she was. She sent an email. She wasn't going to be attending. So. Oh, she's not attending. Okay. So basically, um, we're um, we. She has volunteered to be the representative for research of the EV level three they, charger for the town. Uh, <coughs> I think they approved it already. That's why she didn't need to be around. She didn't need to be one. Well, I thought we had to approve it too. Or something. Anyway, I I I am. Um, I approve of Diane's volunteering to to work on behalf of the select board for that. You guys, I can second that. Uh, yep, yep. Um, with um, what that conversation is about, I'll just jump in and deal with it now. Is the Green Mountain Power has offered to um, sponsor a level three charging station in the town of Rochester on town property, and they want to have a conversation about where that would be uh, likely appropriate to do and in my mind thinking about it probably right outside the town clerk's office here is the is as good a spot as any the only drawback with that might be doing that if, if that requires three-phase power they'll have to run three-phase power from the street out to the end of this school yeah. street here mm -hmm. Um, the only other places we have three phase that I can think of that would be non floodplain would be the school right off the steep bank there where you drive into the school to the right. Mm. And there's three phase at the, the uh, telephone building. Mm -hmm. And there's three phase down here. So the telephone the building right. is not really our property, though, is it? <coughs> it is, <coughs> because we own between the sidewalk and the road. No. The park is considered everything from the sidewalk through the park. It's, mm -hmm. its acreage is four acres, yep. but there's only like two and a half, maybe, that's actual grass. Mm -hmm. All the rest is the road. The road around it. So yeah. that's an option, but I don't think it's really the right option yeah. myself, yeah. personally. I think this would be the great, a good spot if they would be willing to run three mm -hmm. bays out here. Yeah. So would we need to change the rules of the parking lot or no charging after 10 o'clock? Yeah, we'd have to do something like that. I would think. I mean, that would be. There's, there's no parking after 10 o'clock, but I guess right. if they're sitting in their car at a charging station, that would be an exception. All right. It should be, <coughs> should be yeah, noted I, that we, can, we can't park here after 10. All right. Or we could change up, you know, change the rule on something like that. If really? you know, for EV parking, could be extended yeah. Yeah, be hours. Or charging, something. not parking here. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is a level three? That's a fast charge. That has so, to be three phase. I I believe so. I don't know that for a fact, Terry, but <laughs> I would say it probably does. Jeff Gephardt is saying yes, and he has something to add to this conversation too, if we could. Yep. Right. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, I, I spoke with Diane earlier because uh, she had not been aware of uh, Green, Green Mountain Powers reaching out to us. Um, and uh, so I don't know whether she still is interested in working on that. I did provide her with a time 
coming up on Wednesday at 2.30. I believe we're meeting at the town clerk's office for that. I didn't see where the meeting was to occur, but I'm assuming GMP is coming down to meet with us at uh, that time. Is that correct, John? Is that Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, I had it on my calendar for Wednesday. We have a budget meeting on Wednesday at three. I will uh, go back to the emails and try to determine that when we go, go about other business. Okay. Yeah. Might be good to get another day there, Jeff, if we could, because that budget finance meeting starts at three and, and everybody here has to attend. I would like to attend that. Yep. EV with, with Green Mountain. So is um, Diane Tietzel is not aware of that Green Mountain Power? Do you know if she's still interested in working with us on that? Or is that she, um, this is, um, renders her, her efforts um, redundant? Um, well, I, I don't know that it necessarily uh, would take her away from working on it. Um, I know that uh, Maureen Gannon was also interested in working towards getting uh, charging improvements in Rochester. Um, so, you know, I'll check with the members of the those two members of the Energy Committee and see if uh, they're comfortable teaming up or, you know, or want to uh, work on something else as a result. All right. Well, I, um, I guess I um, should verify it, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday. And if um, it is Wednesday, maybe we could push that off to Thursday. But it's, um, I guess that they're, they're, um, they're scheduled since they're the ones um, putting the bill for this. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll contact them tomorrow and see if they can reschedule for Thursday. Um, if not, and, uh, you know, I... Uh, um, and take notes and yep yep that'd be that with you. I'd be okay with that Jeff Jeff do we know if this charging station is going to charge all electric cars or just certain types I don't know if there's any charging station that can do all uh, EVs at this point in time um, okay so we just want to be transparent that if this charging station does not do Teslas let's say um, you know, we, we want to be clear about what we're installing. Yeah, and, and I don't know whether they're thinking of uh, two types, one type, um, or, uh, you know, what the status is. I, I've been hearing rumors of adapters uh, coming mm -hmm. down the pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, right, because uh, this... a, a lot of people in general public don't realize that there, there are different chargers for different cars. Um, excuse me, could I ask a question? Sure. Um, if Jeff or whoever else is involved in this would keep me um, um, in the loop as far as what's going to happen if a decision is made about when this is going to, when and where it's going to be, you know, the charging station and what type and all that kind of stuff, like you said, you know, because I'd like to do a, an article about it. I think it'd be very interesting for people. Um, and also, like Patty mentioned, you know, if, if we could find out, you know, if I could have, uh, you know, eventually in my, in an article, you know, what types of cars could be charged, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I think it would make a, a good article and, and be very informative yeah. for people in town. Absolutely. And GMP is looking to get some PR out of this as well. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I think Nancy had her hand up too. Do you have something, Nancy? Oh, I was just going to say, um we could move the budget meeting perhaps to five o'clock if that would help no let's not do that <laughs> let's keep that we through. could also um <laughs> jeff you could also you could also but ask it, it, um green mountain power if they could come at two instead of 2 30 because it shouldn't really take that long yeah. to have this conversation with them i wouldn't think He's you right. Time. Okay. All right. To be continued, I guess we'll um, know more after these uh, after that meeting. 
Um, so we've got Joan is not here tonight, but we do have um, an update from her. I'll, I'll read that. And she um, last Friday she filed the reimbursement request for the large project closeout with the state for the second part of our road repair work referred to by FEMA as incomplete roads and cross drains. This covers all work done in 2020 and 2021, which was, which was completed on October 15th of this year. Total cost of this work is $157,466.51. And attached is the state's letter to this, is the state's letter to the state certifying the closeout. <laughs> Uh, probably the state's letter to FEMA certifying the closeout and asking FEMA to approve it. Um, she does not know when we'll see this reimbursement, though it seems to be moving faster than her previous submission for complete roads and cross drains, which was submitted in November 3rd. There's one more submission she'll be making for this project, which is Category Z for administrative costs, and she's been told we're approved for a maximum reimbursement in that category of $25,000 which she believes is based on a percentage of our total costs and her time alone on that project uh, probably will be that much. And um, <clears throat> she's moving on next to the easements for the West Hill Bridge and the backup generator bid. And that's um, Joan's report for tonight. So um, it would be nice to see some of that money come back from FEMA. That's been a long project. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, you said easements for um, the, the generator and... The easement would be for the West Hill Bridge, um, not easement for the backup. It's for the Sorry. bid for the backup generator for the town Thank office. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, anybody have any questions for me as Joan? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, Tony, welcome. Thank you. Well, uh, the library is still doing porch pickups, of course, because of the disease. And we have a trustees meeting tomorrow at uh, 6 o'clock, and that's on Zoom or at the library club, I guess I should say. All right. And I know we, um, you and I had a conversation, you're expressing um, your concern that the library doesn't fall um, along the wayside in the, in the queue for repairs to town buildings. But um, the, um, I think that, do we know anything about that, um, the meeting for the grants from the historical preservation folks? What, what is, do you know when we'll hear from them about that? I don't. I think that it's way too soon now. And I don't yeah. Know. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We, yeah. right. The meeting went pretty well, I thought. You know, yeah. the gals went through the place. Um, I have reservations about going through uh, this historical part of it. I think that's going to make the project be quite costly in mm -hmm. the end. Uh, looking at how the building was constructed, there might be, and Jeff also had something to say about that, to me anyway, um, that there might be a, easier ways to deal with it. Mm -hmm. rather than go through historical preservation and yet keep the integrity of the building. Yeah. So um, he's got some ideas. I'm not sure really ready for yeah. public comment on those yet. And it's just something that we need to address going forward. Yeah. That's yeah. all. But just rest assured that we're not ignoring the libraries. Just not, um, not a lot of money to dole out. And well, I just direction. think we need to find a way to get more, and yeah. maybe sometime in grants, but I don't want the library to be <coughs> at the bottom of the town's building list either, mm -hmm. uh, because it's right on the main road. It is an important building for the town. Yep, understood. Jeff Gephardt has something? Yeah, Jeff? Um, yeah, I think... Uh, Jeanette will be asking at the trustees meeting um, a question as to whether or who has the authority to approve a uh, basically some intrusive disassembly of the 
an exterior wall in a couple of places so that we can see exactly what is there, how it's constructed, and um, you know, be able to uh, diagnose and prescribe um, a repair that will shed water in that building. So the question really, I mean, is it the library trustees that have that determination? I think or it is. is. It it's the, really the, the, um, the, the, it's the trustees that have all the, the power and decision making over the, the library budget. And what, and Frank, have you got? Well, I would think when the, I think the town took that on back when Charlie Biederman and them and Danny McIntyre and those guys were on the board. I'd like to read what they had to say about mm -hmm. that before we say that the trustees have any. Yep. Because I know the town, for whatever reason, took over the maintenance of the outside of the building at that time, and I don't know what that agreement says or how it was constructed. Mm -hmm. So I would think we'd want to go back and check the minutes on that right. back then, because that yep. was quite a few years ago that that transpired. So I think we should probably go back and check that before we determine yeah. that. Nancy, that. you have something? Um, the trustees actually hold the deed to the building. It was originally deeded to them. They are the owners. The town agreed to, to take care of maintenance on the exterior we've also taken care of in, uh, maintenance on the interior. Um, so there's a, there's a lengthy file in the town office on it. So the major renovation that we did within uh, 10 years ago, whatever, um, that, that was a run through the town budgets? That's a bond yep. that we pay through the town. Right. That yep. we are paying. Oh, yeah. They're definitely in, entwined. Yeah. In the town, the library. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Again, to be continued. Um, so, wait a minute. Yep, you got more? Hey, Nancy, do you, would you be willing to go through that with me? I will. Tony, do you want to be involved in that too? Sure. Okay. That'd be good to have somebody there from the trustees too. Right. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> okay, moving on. I, will, I think Jeff has something. Jeff is okay. Go for it. Yeah, I've, I've talked to Jeanette, and she is going to provide me with the information. She found further information about the uh, weatherization work that was done. Um, so I will get a chance to take a look at that. But I think really in order to understand what's going wrong in that building, um, we need to, to peek underneath the cloud cladding and, and uh, around the window and where the upstairs and the first floor join um, so that we can clearly understand what the, why there's leakage there and what we have to do to fix it. Yeah. Probably that storm the other night um, drove a little bit of water into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, was, the right direction. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, we're moving on from the library now. Everyone agreed? Okay. <clears throat> uh, on to the highway. Um, thank you, Terry, for picking up some of the slack after um, Cooter's little mishap there. No problem. Yep. Um, and they've been off to um, grab my truck some more sand because we've been going through it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, Steady as she goes, and Cooter's um, healing from a few 14 stitches in his palm. Yep. Um, you may not want to what see. What happened to him? Oh, he, uh, he, um, he, he suffered a cut on his hand and, and, um, and changing a cutter blade on one of the plows. Kind of nasty cut. Mm -hmm. Are but we putting that sand in ourselves? Yep. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yep. It's actually um, saving a lot of money that way. They, I saw him go through with yeah. a couple loads today. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Terry, you are here. You have anything on the utilities front? No. Uh, fire, fire department. Fire department. All right. Uh, as you know, in budget finance committee, there we spent about new truck. 
Mm-hmm. So at some point I'd like to get firm prices, but I haven't gone to see anybody because you know I didn't know where we stood about that. And it's no sense in wasting salesman's time if we aren't going to do anything. Well, the budget that we're talking about is from July 2022 through 20 June the end of June 2023. Correct. So that that's the time frame. But that you can order it before, so you get it you in can. July or mm -hmm. August. I I think we're just kind of waiting to see yeah. how when we finish up more on the budget. I think before we make a decision. Yeah, on it's gonna it. be no a matter of getting this truck in and having a bunch of work done to it. Well, it's it's we're we're talking the. We're talking thirty days. Yeah, at the most. Right. So most. we just need to get through the. The budget uh, well, like business. Oh, like year. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like February, you're gonna be able to tell me. Yeah. You know, yeah. Before that. Time to go yeah. Before you, that. you should be able to That's know. That's what I want because they aren't gonna start making it until. Uh, now I think it's March. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the ballpark price of the chassis was like fifty-two thousand. Yep. Yep. We have that. <coughs> so, and then the body will be another form. Yep. Then everything will take off this truck and put it on the new one. The pump and the <coughs> tanks and all that business. Because mm -hmm. I mean you know, paving that truck or what are you doing? Yeah. Paving. It's getting had some issues yeah. where I'm getting down to where it's saying, you know, after with my last agenda, you know, I don't want the same thing to happen now. No way. I don't want the headache. Or liability. If that truck ain't safe, it's not leaving. But it is 23 years old. <laughs> so, and like I said, the first three quarters of its life was living in a bad place. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. You know, with no way to wash it good or anything. Now, the trucks all get washed, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning or not. They go out of the barn, they get washed. Mm -hmm. Guys aren't crack with it, but I make them do it. <laughs> so no, I just want. Yeah, I just want to keep the thorn on it. It's so a good I, practice. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, we should. Because we're going to start making 2023s in March. Yeah. You you should you should know before that. I mean, yeah, we'll, we, yeah. we just are trying to get through the budget process and figure right. out where we go from there. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, Jeff, back to you as the energy coordinator. Do you have something that you'd like to elaborate on? The, uh, the only thing that I mentioned is on May uh, 6th, we had a another meeting of the Rochester area uh, climate initiative. Uh, over 40 people uh, from the Twin Town area participated in the, in the Zoom. Um, we broke into three groups uh, looking at the uh, prioritization that the uh, our program has done, um, both in terms of developing ideas and then prioritizing those ideas. And we looked at them for current status and next step. Um, we, there were probably uh, 10 resource people that were brought in by the Vermont Council on Rural Development um, and 40 participants listed on the Zoom. But I saw at least uh, five to six people where there were two, two people uh, listening in uh, you know, from the Quintown area. Uh, the uh, areas uh, in, on the energy side that uh, were of most interest to people um, were uh, electric vehicle charging, uh, weatherization of existing homes, and uh, uh, working on municipal energy opportunities and siting solar uh, options. So yeah, those this, will be um, was the, part uh, of this for the energy committee. Was a um, Green Mountain Power's offer to um, sponsor a charging station, I believe, was an uh, outcome of this meeting because they were they were there at the meeting, and I think after um, <coughs> witnessing the the.
focus on that as being a priority. That was pretty quickly that they they contacted asking to to meet about this. The next day. The next day. The very next yeah. day. Yeah. So that's yep. a pretty quick result. Yeah. So that's all I have at the moment. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> On to the um, new business. Uh, I want to, uh, Martha, this should go into paper. Able, Able Waste will be providing their services on Sunday, December 26th, instead of Saturday or Christmas. So they'll still be here that weekend. Um, and to collect all of your um, Christmas carnage wrappings. And, June, I have a question. Do you know if because New Year's Day is on Saturday as well, they're going to do it on Saturday? Sunday the second of January as well. Did they mention I, that at all? I, no, they didn't they'll mention that. Saturday. I think they'll be here Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Saturday, New Year's Day. Yeah. Bring your own home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just wondered. Yep. No, no, There'll be a sorry. breathalyzer outside. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and we also have uh, an application for a driveway permit, and that is on. Um, 1274 Town Line Road, uh, Larry Roach property, and Cooter had looked at that, and um, I think, um, Dave, you're um, going to be doing the work, um, and it, it specified you're using a 24-inch, 40-foot culvert, but Cooter has concerns out there. You may end up running into ledge there, and, and if that's the case, you'd, you'd want to size it down to the 18-inch. First, um, the, the ditch is already about four feet deep. Um, so I think Cooter's thinking where his old driveway is. That's not it. No, oh, okay. It's just down the way, about 100 yards. And the ditch is probably armpit high if I would jump into it. All right, so, so it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem at all, no. Okay. No, it's going to be plenty of cover over it. And just like say, 40 feet, because the semis are going to have to come out there. Mm. And hopefully <coughs> they don't have much town road shoulder to the trees are tight, so they're going to have to really use it all yeah. in the driveway. So, yeah, no, I don't, uh, it's a deep, deep ditch right there. Uh, it's going to take a lot of material. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sounds, sounds good. It. Improve that. That's for logging. Yeah, for a couple of work hours. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to go in there and, and uh, log this thing. All right. Yep. So I'm good with that. You good with have a yep. second? I second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay, and this is. Diane, we already talked about. And um, the end of the year, closing dates for the town office. Um, I just saw that posted on the door, but we um, should mention that. So the 24th is a holiday. Yep. And then the following week, we're just going to shut the office um, so we can get caught up with our books. and. Yeah, for end of year. End of year and new year. So it will be closed for the week following the 24th. Oh, yeah. We can... Um, I mean, we can be reached by email or by phone if, if anybody needs anything. Okay. But the office will be closed for a walk-in. Yep. yep. All right. Okay. Uh, Nancy, did you have something? Um, I, I expect we'll have a budget meeting that week, too. So yeah. That would be the 29th. That, that'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, excuse me. I just want to make sure I got this correct about the closing, um, of Julie. Um, am I correct that it's closed for walk-ins for on December 24th and the following week, the 27th through the 31st? But did you say you could call? People could call? Yes. Email. Or not? Call or email. Call or email. Call or email. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But the 24th were totally closed. And the... Okay. The, but that second, first. the week after, they could call or email. Yes. yes. And we have, a, we have a select board meeting. We have a select board meeting on Monday night, night too. Yeah. Yes. Right. All right. Um, <coughs> anybody um, comments from the public at large? We yeah. Have Vic on Zoom. Yeah. Hi, Vic. Hey. Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to uh, comment as the uh, COVID uh, task force chair, and I apologize I didn't get my thoughts together in time to 
asked to get on the agenda, so I thought I'd uh, share my thoughts uh, in the public comment. I got two points of information to share and a, and a recommendation. First is that uh, the health department data for Rochester is now showing that uh, we've had uh, 12 new COVID cases between uh, November 17th and, and December the 8th. So that's about one every two days, actually a little bit faster than that. Um, and uh, there's a chart on the uh, health department website that shows infection rates by town. We are the top of the charts, uh, the darkest blue color, if you're familiar with that, that uh, graphic. Um, you know, Thanksgiving gatherings and colder weather are probably the likely uh, reasons for that increase. It's just human nature. And now we've got Christmas and New Year's coming. And, uh, and those typically include people visiting from out of the area as well. So I think we should expect increased infection rates in the very near future and that we should be doing more uh, to the extent we can to help uh, protect each other. The other, the other point of information is the Omicron variant, which I know we've all been reading and hearing about. It's spreading exponentially across Europe and is explosively growing, uh, doubling every three to four days. It's in the United States in 30 states, and it's for sure, and it's probably in every state by this point. Um, so, you know, and that's showing to be an even more contagious form of the virus than, than the Delta version. So, um, you know, protection against COVID is a layered thing. There's no one single bullet, uh, to the extent that we can do all these things simultaneously, vaccination, boosting, masking, distancing, uh, all that helps. Um, and I, and I'd like to ask the select board to consider adopting a motion to strongly recommend that local places where people gather, the restaurants, the stores, et cetera, uh, put signs up to, uh, uh, to tell people or ask people to uh, mask up to come in to, uh, to use those businesses. I'm not recommending a mask mandate. I don't think that would do anything more than a strong recommendation and, and uh, uh, they're not enforceable. And I, I don't think we wanna be putting business staff in the role of uh, mask bouncers. Uh, but I do think it, that you know, a strong statement from the select board could be helpful. It's just one more thing you know, on top of everything else that people can be doing to help protect each other and uh, try to stem the flow. But I think it's pretty clear that uh, the winter time because people tend to be indoors and the holiday and good cheer that everybody longs for and getting together is uh, you know, has a risk to it as well. And we're, you know, we're, we're well into that and it's likely to get worse before it gets better. Um, Vic, yeah. do you have any way of getting any sort of um, statistics on how, what percentage of people in the area here, the Rochester area are vaccinated or? or, or yeah, you know? it's on the same website. I can Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I just it's wondered if, if you Yeah, it's, that it's, it's high. It's 80 to 90%, somewhere in that range. Good. Uh, and, and, you know, there is good news out there, too. I mean, the uh, pediatric uh, 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 as young as five years old can now get vaccinated and teenagers uh, as young as uh, 16, I think, are eligible to get a booster shot. There are therapeutic pills uh, that Pfizer and Merck are uh, going through the regulatory process that should be available within you know, the next month or so. Uh, there's uh, much more availability of at-home testing that people can do. Uh, so there's, there's more tools available. Um, and again, you know, this is just one more thing that we might do. I know the Rochester and Stockbridge schools were planning um, um, vaccination um, events, you know, for, for the kids. Oh, so. Kenley, you look, is that a question for me? You're on mute, Kenley. Can't hear you, Kenley, you're on mute. Vic, are there any statistics on um, how many infections are um, with vaccinated people versus unvaccinated? Uh, I think there isn't a statewide basis. I'm not sure about more locally. Thank you, I'll look it up. I had something different when uh, it's my turn. Okay. Anyway, so that's, that's my uh, comment for tonight, unless anybody has any questions. 
So <clears throat> is that something we'd need to, if we're making an official decision to do that, that we'd have to have on the agenda to yeah, I take think action so. on that? I think so. Yeah. yeah, I want to give you a chance yeah. to think about it and discuss it, yeah. of course. Uh, but uh, again, I apologize for not bringing this up uh, before the agenda was put together, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it too late to put that on the budget and finance agenda? No, no, we could. Well, that's, um, <clears throat> I mean, is that the proper place we could discuss it? I a think bit? Vic's statement right here now covers it. That's yeah, whether that's whether, whether, whether we endorse it or not, as <clears throat> officially, he's, he's yeah. our representative for that and he's made the statement. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, I think we can all say that we agree completely with him and, yeah. you know, whether we can formally, um, you know, Take action that that hasn't We're been formally warned. Agreeing that right. we agree with them. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, Vic, if you would be willing to um, just jot down a, 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 a sample, what you think would be a good statement that we could, um, the town could then distribute to the the businesses and places uh, that public gathers, like the Park House and you know Pierce Hall. That would be you know the yeah. stories. Yeah. And you can also, uh, Vic, put it on Front Porch Forum, which seems to be, you know, the the, the, the main venue nowadays for information. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll do both of those things. But it yeah. sounds also that you're, you're encouraging people in their private homes to be very cautious. Yes, and that's, that's still yeah. the posted recommendation from the health department as well. Yeah. So, okay. the same old advice he always gave the kids don't talk to strangers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from strangers. Yeah. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. Thank you. Um, anyone else that's got public comment out there? Yep. Can we? I do. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, quick uh, call everyone's attention to a new release of funds announced on a WCAX article by Housing Commissioner Josh Hannaford. $5 million coming down the line for mostly a Vermont homeless initiative um, with the, uh, specifically for renovating existing uh, structures and homes for, for uh, probably mostly homeless. I realize we don't have a lot of homeless um, uh, problem here in Rochester, but uh, it may be possible to access uh, the, some of those funds for some of the um, reusable and renovatable residences around the area. Thank you. Um, is anyone else? No, so and I, I guess I um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> all, right. All, right. all right. Thank you all. And thank you, you everybody, all, for your hard work. Bye, guys. Yep. Happy, happy holidays, everyone. Yeah.